Welcome back. Yeah. Well, guys, guess what? We're back at it. It's the Wisconsin Files. Yeah, well, we're back. Okay guys, so today we are revisiting the case of Little Lord Fauntleroy. This was actually our very first case we presented to you all a year ago, almost exactly. Yeah. And we decided this would be the perfect case to try to bring some more information, do a little bit better job in, compared to what we did last time. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Cut back to the tablecloth. Hey guys, welcome back to the Wisconsin Files. Today? Okay. <laughs> so we decided to gather a little bit more information, do a better detailed job, and present something a little more... Modern. More modern, definitely. On March 8th, 1921, an employee of the O'Loughlin Rock Quarry by the name of John Brillick made a horrifying discovery. There in the quarry pond was the body of a young boy aged five to seven. He was said to be dressed in fine clothing for the time, such as his leather shoes, black stockings, black trousers, and a fine gray sweater. He was believed to have had blonde hair and brown eyes, and it seemed prior to his death that he had been treated well during his short life. Due to his refined appearance, he was dubbed Little Lord Fauntleroy, after the novel, by the media and townsfolk of Waukesha, Wisconsin. Sheriff Keebler and Coroner L.F. Lee would arrive at the quarry to investigate one of Wisconsin's most baffling mysteries. It would later be determined that the boy had died of blunt force trauma to the head due to there being little water in his lungs and the deep gash across his head, and that he was later disposed of in the quarry pond where he was estimated to have been from anywhere to a couple of days to even as long as six months. Investigators would team up with the Milwaukee Police Department in hopes of bringing a name to this child. It struck police odd that not a single soul was looking for this boy. Even with tips coming in, their search was starting to run cold. Alright, so on March 8th, 1921, an O'Loughlin employee at the Rock Quarry discovered the remains of a 5-7 to seven year old boy. He was described as having blonde hair, brown eyes, he was actually missing a tooth from his lower jaw, and the clothing that he was said to be wearing was like it, I guess it was described as being that of a well-to-do family that's what I'm well, trying to yeah. say they were wealthy so they were able to actually track down I don't remember if it was the shoes or the jacket or one of the pieces of clothing he also had like Munsing Sorry. underwear which were also said to be of fine material and so they were actually able to track down at I think you said was a Bradley company possibly. Yeah. It was a yeah. It was it was a it was a business that catered to the more well-off families or middle-class families. He literally came from wealth. That's what they were assuming. It was also said that Little Lord Fauntleroy, as he was deemed, because that that came the name the nickname Little Lord Fauntleroy was based off of the story Little Lord Fauntleroy about the little rich lad. Yeah. That, yeah, and so that's where he ended up getting this nickname that clearly was not his real name. They no. never found out who or where this little boy came from, unfortunately. And there would be multiple people that would come into play with this story. Um, Homer LeMay, the case with Homer LeMay. I think they also thought he was a couple other popular missing kids at the time. There was a lot of Yeah, there was literally, it, that's that's how it goes with these old timey cases too, yeah. you know? It's just, it's sad, it's sad all these kids that have passed away so early on in Wisconsin, it's disturbing. Little Lord Fauntleroy was assumed to have come from a well-to-do family, possibly in the Milwaukee area, or at least in the Chicago. Midwest. Yeah, even Chicago, they thought. Um, but all this would ultimately lead to nowhere. The most peculiar of tip-offs came from an employee of the O'Loughlin Quarry named Mike Coker. Mike went on to say that back in February, he had seen a suspicious couple in the exact area asking if anyone had seen a little boy. The woman asking this question was said to have been crying and upset. She was wearing a red sweater and accompanied by a well-dressed gentleman who was said to be staring in the exact same location that the boy would be found one month later. He said the couple drove off in a Ford never to be seen again. Another tip came from Liberty Department store owner David Dobrik, and no, not that David Dobrik. Anyways, David was positive that it was him who had sold the clothing that the boy was found in, and only a few months before he had been found. Unfortunately, it never says whether or not Dobrik could describe the people he had sold the items to. 
As police continued their investigation, the body of the young boy was displayed in the local funeral home window in a desperate attempt to identify him. His face was sketched by an artist and plastered all over the newspapers in the surrounding areas. Though thousands of people came to view the boy, no one recognized him. Even with a posted reward, no solid information was leading them anywhere. Still, sparse tips would come in and that would spark small bits of hope and police would follow up on every single lead. Time would pass until a lead came in from Chicago accusing a woman's husband named Mrs. Homeridge of kidnapping their children and that the boy discovered was their son. This was quickly proven false when they were located alive and well. Discouraged once more, this case again would run cold. So police were led ultimately nowhere with these leads. They couldn't dig up any more information, so they decided to display little Lord Fauntleroy's body at the funeral home in hopes that somebody around the area would come and identify him and Recognize do him thousands of people. There's a lot of people. Yeah, all they over. All, yeah, all over the Midwest. Like this was big news over here, you know? We didn't get a lot of action until Ed Gein and Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> so so it was pretty pretty boring. Anyways, a lot of people came out to try to identify this little boy and it led again. Nowhere. They found no more new leads. There was nothing, nothing to awful. indicate where this kid had came from, you know? And unfortunately, too, like, now you can test somebody's blood and you can tell the a specific region that they grew right. up in. You know, you're able to, like, determine this kind of stuff with that technology. But back then, man, you just, like, anything. drew a little sketch, put it in the paper, and, like, there you see is. them? <laughs> like, this generalized photo of a kid, you know? It's just kind of sad. Investigators were hopeful once more when they learned of the disappearance of Homer LeMay. Now this connection wouldn't be made until 1949 when then Milwaukee medical examiner E.L. Theringer proposed that the true identity of little Lord Fauntleroy was in fact Homer LeMay. Homer had gone missing around the same time that the little boy's body was found, and Homer's father Edmund LeMay was more than just a shady character. Attention was brought to him when his second wife Cecilia went missing, and it seems like people tended to disappear around Edmund, and suspiciously enough, he never reported either of them missing. Edmund had a tumultuous relationship history, and even had one of his ex-wives claimed he tried to kill her by throwing a live wire into the bathtub she was in. In 1921, Edmund was married to a woman named Hazel, and they had a six-year-old son named Homer LeMay at that time. Hazel would die of tuberculosis, leaving Homer in Edmund's care. When he was asked what happened to his son, he was seen without so soon after his wife's death. Edmund claimed Homer was in foster care and later adopted by a couple named Mr. and Mrs. Norton. The couple would travel to Argentina where they would claim a car crash subsequently killed Homer. This was never confirmed and there was no evidence to say any crime ever took place. The case against Edmund remains circumstantial, and his wife Cecilia and son Homer have never been found. No DNA testing has ever been done to exclude LeMay from the equation either. So I guess it'll just remain a mystery. So, police were left with nothing in the end. Oh yeah, and I remember too, it was Minnie Conrad who ended up paying for the Lord Fauntleroy's funeral services, mm -hmm. which is also kind of sad to think about. Like, there was no family to come and collect this little boy, there was just nothing. And, um, sure. yeah, and, yeah, he was just left nameless. I mean, that's more heartbreaking, I think, to just be buried unknown. And too, back in the day, it's not like they had news, like, on the TV, where you could no. just, you know, it... I know people today, like, people that have uh, had a loved one missing from like the 80s or whatever, and they're just finding closure now, you know, like decades later. I always hold out hope that they, they'll figure like, these old cases out, yeah, you know? I think that's why it's important that we do these stories, just to get the word out. You never know, there could be like that one person out there that just Watching. knows something, yeah, that are, is like, oh, this kind of sounds like a vaguely familiar family story we heard about, you know? A little Ted. boy going, yeah, Uncle Ted went missing back in 1910. You just, you never know. We're going to step back to that couple. So remember that couple we talked about in the beginning, the suspicious couple? Well, mm -hmm. reports would come in of a woman heavily veiled, which I was like, what does that mean? Did she have multiple veils like over her face so nobody could identify her looking like Lydia as the bride in Beetlejuice? Yeah. So <laughs> like just super veiled. Like, she was reported to be around the cemetery leaving flowers at this boy's grave and then nobody ever I'd be going up like girl you know something you know anything does this little boy ring a bell what are you doing I would have a ton of questions to ask so I think I thought that was really interesting I mean yeah 
I mean, no, nobody, I mean, uh, Some people do, I guess. But, but why be that suspicious? Well, I think Homer LeMay is really my, my, the strongest out of all of them. Homer LeMay, I thought, that, and, and literally this fact that Homer LeMay is bothered, we should just bust open a whole case on Homer LeMay too. Yeah. Because dude, his dad is so sus. Yeah. So sparse, guys. Stories didn't match up. No, nothing, nothing made sense. That guy would be my number one. Yeah, he would be my number one. And then that couple, I mean, I don't it's know. It's the same people. It could be. Who knows? That's what I mean. Like, the yeah. case was just so bizarre. On March 14th, 1921, the boy's body was finally laid to rest. It was said that an unknown individual scratched on the coffin lid the words, Our Darling. It was also rumored that folks seen a heavily veiled woman in attendance of the funeral, a woman that nobody in the community seemed to recognize. I also wanted to mention that there was another rumor going around, a rumor that a woman committed suicide in the exact same mill pond where little Lord Fauntleroy's body was found, perhaps the same woman that was seen asked, asking questions earlier, but we may never know the truth. Police did follow up on this lead, and they actually threw dynamite into the mill pond in hopes of bringing a body up, to which never happened. There was no body ever found or any evidence to suggest anybody committed suicide other than that report. So we may never know who little Lord Fauntleroy really was, and he remains one of Wisconsin's oldest mysteries. Thank you guys so much for joining us again, and I'll catch you next time. But yeah, so, so we're back, we're back. We're bringing so much more content to you guys and all. Laura's starting her own channel. So Y'all better go over there and give her some give her some love, guys. I'm gonna link her channel and stuff in the description below. Go we'll follow us on Instagram. We got the Wisconsin files up on Instagram. We might throw up gang signs. Wisconsin! <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're gonna be uploading a lot more frequently now. We're gonna make this a weekly thing for sure. Uh, but yeah, 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 definitely go check her out and we will catch you guys in the next video. I have no idea what we're gonna be doing. No idea. It's a surprise! You'll have to wait and see. Come back next week. See you guys later. <laughs>